Hi, welcome to Forever Paranormal with Dr. Bill and Deb. The term paranormal refers to phenomena and experiences that are beyond the scope of normal scientific understanding and cannot be easily explained through traditional scientific principles. These phenomena often challenge conventional beliefs and are associated with the supernatural, metaphysical, or unexplained aspects of reality. As with any field of inquiry, it is essential to approach the paranormal with an open but critical mind, relying on empirical evidence and logical reasoning to draw conclusions. It's a topic that continues to intrigue and challenge both believers and skeptics alike, and if we can connect a paranormal element to it, we'll talk about it. You'll be surprised by what all can be connected to the paranormal. Please don't forget to follow, rate, and share the show, since it would not be possible without you, our listeners. And as a public service, we would like to let everyone know that you are truly never alone, even if you think you are. The Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is 988. Please just reach out. Well, hello there. Welcome to this week's episode, where we are going to celebrate one year since the official release of Forever Paranormal's podcast by talking about some of our favorite episodes. We did start putting some unofficial releases out in January of 2023, but our official release was actually on March 1st of 2023, which is quickly approaching. So, with that, hi Deb, how are you feeling this week? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing okay. So, you know, we've we've talked about habituating crows and stuff for the last year or so, Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think it's really cool that I think we're actually habituating a red-tailed hawk. How so? Well, we've been putting out cooked chicken. And whenever we put cooked chicken out, the hawk comes and eats. You've seen him. I've seen him. He comes. He takes up the whole plate. He's huge. And all the crows will come around, and they can't touch anything until that hawk's got his fill and he <laughs> leaves. And he does leave some left over for the crows, which is pretty cool. But it seems like every time we put it out now, which we've been doing once a week, He'll come and eat. And I just think that's awesome. Yeah, that That, is. That's pretty cool. He's very pretty. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful bird. So this is something we've added as we've gone along. And it's where I asked Deb if she has anything new for us. And I I don't know about you guys. I think you do. But I really enjoy this part of the show. It's really great to see the different items she researches and comes up with. I mean, she come up with a 24-carat gold-plated toilet. (laughs) I mean, holy crap, right? I mean, it, it was just awesome. She's yeah. come up with some really cool stuff. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm going to let her go ahead and roll with it. Okay, so here is the attention-grabbing headline. Alabama station in disbelief after 200-foot radio tower stolen. So the background of the story is that this station owner sent a landscape crew to do some spring cleaning around the the tower and the the building that is adjacent to it. And when they get there, they radio back in horror that they can't find the tower. It's not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> and, you know, everybody's freaking out and and once they said, well, the building was vandalized and broken into, that's when it sunk into the owner that Thieves must have stolen all the equipment, which they did. They left the wires, but they they stole all the equipment, including a transmitter and this 200-foot tall tower. That's a pretty big tower to take down and steal. Unfortunately, this uh, station is privately owned, and they did not have insurance, so, you know, they... They're in a quandary and still are not operating, but they'll eventually get back on their feet, they hope. But my thing is, how in the world did thieves overnight, I'm assuming overnight, 
um, dismantle and steal this 200-foot tower. You can't just roll it over onto the back of a flatbed trailer. No, you can't. And it usually takes a crane, a small crane, to take something like that down or put it up. And even if it's a rural area, somebody's bound to see this big, huge crane or this big, huge truck or something. Yeah, uh, it, it, it took a couple mm-hmm. days to do that. It That's not to. something you do overnight, Deb. Had it, to have. Yeah, it, it definitely took a couple days. And this isn't your typical crackheads that are coming in stealing copper wire. They took a radio station, it sounds like. Basically, the, the transmitter and a, yeah, everything except the wires. <laughs> that's pretty wild. Did they catch you, did it? No, the, uh, the mayor commented that there wasn't enough information for them to launch a full-scale investigation at the time of the interview. I think all they need to do is talk to the FCC and find out who just got a new radio license. Well, there's that. That'd be a good start in my book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty wild. That's not something you can come and do. And I can just imagine the faces on the landscaping guys who are like, we can't find a place. They're looking in the air, driving around, (laughs) looking for this tower. It's not there. (laughs) I know in the past, I've, I went out west and did some work on some radio towers and stuff during some storms. And even though they gave us GPS coordinates, that's how we found them. I mean, we could see the towers. Yeah. You know, but that's pretty wild. That's a good one. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. Well, folks, we haven't scripted much of this show for this week, as we're going to just talk about some of our favorites and why they were our favorites. So before we get started, I do want to say that This show is completely researched, written, edited, and produced by us. Well, mainly me, as this is one of the enjoyable aspects of it for me. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get started into some of our favorite episodes. Okay, Deb, I'm going to put you on the spot. And which is one of your favorites? I'm not sure of the episode number, but it was uh, Witches Tools. That would have been episode 15. Okay. Yeah. So why was that one of your favorite? Well, I enjoyed learning about the different tools, and it, it was informational for me. Oh, okay. It, yeah. it wasn't um, theory or speculations or, you know, mysteries that haven't been solved. It's something that actually exists. Is it Could it possibly be part of the fact that it explains some of the items you get to see once yeah. a week that you have no idea what they are sitting around my little office here? Yes, it, it does. It, 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 it explained some things to me that I had questioned, but, you know, oh, okay. glossed over. Well, that's cool. That's really cool. I know one of my favorites was definitely the first one we did, The Rake, mm-hmm. because it wasn't the greatest episode that we put out. And it wasn't the longest episode, but it was our first official episode. And I know you and I had a blast putting that together. Mm -hmm. We must have edited that thing like 4,000 times. I mean, I still can't talk, right? I get tongue-tied and I got a hillbilly draw and everything else. But we just laughed so hard trying to put that together. (laughs) And I still want to go back and visit that episode another time because we did find out that the rake was a creepypasta, blah, blah, blah. But I think that it may be a type of a talpa now, or people are mistaking ghouls for rakes and things like that. I think people are seeing what they're seeing. I'm just not sure if it's the rake, that's the name that it's been given. So maybe that's a new name for a ghoul. Who knows? But yeah, that was one of my favorite ones, that one right there, because it was our first. Then, of course, two years in a row now, I've done bonus episodes on Groundhog Day and Friday the 13th. And those both both are a blast for me because I absolutely love Groundhog Day. And I love all the freaky stuff about Friday the 13th, especially since the Knights Templar were all arrested on October 13th, which was a Friday, and I'm a Knights Templar. So that was pretty cool coincidence. Not really, but (laughs) I, I do like all that. So... Do you have another favorite one that you'd like to talk about? What uh, was your impression, or how did you feel about haunted battlefields? Well, I learned a lot from it. 
Um, it, yeah, I did too. Yeah, we, we, we stayed in the area up there, you know, in Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia area that very historical. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I've never visited any of those. I've driven past them, things like that, but I've never visited any. So I did learn a lot from it. I've seen shows on it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what was your favorite part about that? Well, I have visited Gettysburg. Oh, okay, cool. uh, I believe there was a place in Frederick, Maryland that we mentioned as well. Yeah, yeah. And both places I visited, and it was interesting to hear some background as an adult because, of course, I visited as a child. Yeah, well, you lived in that area, grew up in that area. I didn't. Right. So it just made sense you took your school trips there. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, okay. That's interesting. Now, in that area, again, we, we talked about the Duello, right, which mm-hmm. is the dogman of that area. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I like the dogman episodes and things like that. And I did one a bonus one on a skinwalker, but I didn't feel I did that justice because I feel that I need to have a Navajo guest to, to really do a skinwalker. I, I agree. I, I didn't get into that one too hard. And it was amazing to me about the Doyo because living in that area for, I, don't know, I lived there a long time, but you grew up there. Mm-hmm. I never heard of it. Never heard of it either. Never heard of it until we started researching Dogman, which is just astounding to me. <laughs> you know, and then we've got Bigfoot, right? Sasquatch. Mm-hmm. I listened to a show the other day where this man was a researcher. And he talked about, his living in Western Maryland and all the Sasquatch he ran across and this and that. I was a, a hunting guide and everything else up there for 15 years. <laughs> Never once did I see a footprint. Did I hear anything that I would today say that was a Sasquatch? And it, it just dumbfounds me that I apparently I was in the wrong place or I was completely a oblivious the whole time or and hear me out this guy could think that western maryland being the rem- remotest part of the state and, and nobody really knows the area nobody's going to think that he's making it up if he's making it up uh, it, that could except be except the people that live there i mean we were we were literally on the highest mountains in mm-hmm. the state Mm-hmm. Right in the corner, both Pennsylvania and Maryland. We were right on the highest mountains. I mean, this is an area that even Verizon cell service is sketchy at best. Yeah, I mean, cell, ser- cell-, <coughs> uh-huh. <laughs> cell service is sketchy, mm-hmm. you know. And, and But I'm not saying that he didn't, and I'm not saying that he doesn't have evidence. I'm just saying that it astounds me that I never once ran across anything. Right. I mean... I was in the woods before daylight, after daylight, you know, dark. I would not come out of the woods like two hours after dark because I had hiked in so far. And turkey hunting, my goodness, I I was in the woods at 2 o'clock in the morning waiting on that sunrise so I could bring those birds off to roost. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that, that, that was pretty cool to me, though. It really was. It was interesting. So I think my next favorite one is cursed objects. Yeah. I learned a lot from that one, too. Me, too. And and, and I got creeped out. And you got creeped out. <laughs> yeah, Robert Dahl still creeps me out. But, you know, looking into this episode, it's going to... One of the, one of the episodes we're going to do this coming year is going to be nothing but haunted dolls. There's mm. a lot of haunted doll stories out there and some pretty cool stories of haunted dolls. So that's definitely one that I want to focus on this year. Is there anything in particular you want to focus on this coming year? Um, I, I know. I, I'm, I see a lot of shows that mention shadow people, and they seem to take different forms, and there's different types. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'd like to investigate that a little more and into why and how these and if it's even yeah i I think the whole shadow I, people thing I don't, is, I don't know is worth an episode to look into because you know i think that spirits and ghosts can show themselves as shadow people then you've got the hat man you've got different types of shadow people and all yeah. that stuff so yeah I, I think it is something worth looking into you know that's definitely one to take a look at 
I know when we did the one on state urban legends, that one got way longer and way more involved than what I ever thought it was going to be. Yeah, I think that maybe we could break it down into different states. Yeah, we, we, we did, and we broke episodes. it into two different episodes, if you remember. But I mean, like, concentrate on a, a state in an, in a future episode, just one state, yeah. not a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I think we could go over all the creepy stuff in one state, you know, the haunted things, the... The ghost, the cryptids, the urban legends, everything else by state. That's yeah. a pretty good idea. I, I mean, that's is. that sounds like something fun to research. Because the episode that was the biggest rabbit hole for me, I think, in research was the Vargina incident, the UFO down in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is I got so into that one, I actually went in and found papers from the Brazilian military that were in Portuguese that I had to get translated. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was really something. I mean, I, I dug deep into that thing. Our daughter-in-law is from Brazil. I found stuff she wasn't aware of, <laughs> which, which just tickled me to death because I really did a deep dive on that one. I mean, a deep dive. And that one was a lot of fun, just, just on the research side, because it took me weeks to put that together. I mean, that one wasn't done in 10, 15 hours like I normally do. Mm -hmm. That was weeks working on that. Of course, I like the ones on Halloween because it's my favorite season. Yeah. But I think the one I had the most fun doing was one that one of our listeners and our good friend Kasha had requested we do something on, and that was the Icelandic Elves. Yeah. That episode, Research and Act, and going into the different names and the different legends, that was a blast. Mm -hmm. That was a fun episode. And it's just like the horror movie episode we did with our son Wyatt. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun, too. Because yeah. I didn't realize that him and I really thought of the same with some of the horror movies. Because some of the ones we talked about, we didn't even see together. Yeah. You know? and, and that was pretty cool, you know. He, he's a grown man. He's on his own. Um Haunted Deadwood was another one that was awesome for me because I had a lot of personal experience there. And, uh, you know, I, I did the, some ghost hunting while I was there, and I, I saw a lot of things and had a lot of interactions while I was there. So, so Haunted Deadwood was really cool for me. And there's a lot of episodes that we just touched the surface on. Mm-hmm. We didn't do super deep dives into a lot of things, which we may do, you know. Well, I, one thing that I would like to have seen is a little more feedback from people outside the family or friends. Yeah, I, yeah. it's some more listener feedback. We definitely need that. Yeah. Um, we, we don't get much of that. And I, I welcome it every, every show. You yeah. know, I'd love to have more uh, listener feedback. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And, you know, kind of see what they want to hear, too. I know the Rougarou, that was a cool one, and we got feedback on that one, but that was mostly from some family members that live in that area now, mm -hmm. or did live in that area, but um, that, that was pretty cool, and I've just had a lot of fun so far with it, and I've enjoyed doing it with you, and I appreciate your help and your time putting this together. Yeah, I enjoy it as well. Yeah, because I know it's not easy sometimes, and I know it's not the most convenient thing sometimes, but we are definitely going to make some trips out. Just we telling you. We need you. to. We're going to see the Bell Witch Cave. Uh. Oh, yeah. We're <laughs> going to go see the Bell Witch Cave. Oh, boy. And since you like the witch's tools so much, I'm mm. going to expand on that a little bit. We might do a part two of that for you. Okay. You know, I got a whole slew of stuff locked away you don't even know about. So, <laughs> be prepared. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be surprised at all. So, all right. So, I, I got to take a breather for a minute. So, just hold on there a second, please. And we're back. Phew. I had to get a little drink of water and breath of fresh air there for a second. So, you know, like I said, we just touched the surface on a lot of things, and we could really dig deep into some of these different episodes. 
like uh, Presidents and Aliens and Majestic 12 and the different papers that are out there, you know, and all the files that are being released nowadays. We got more on, you know, the Alaskan Triangle, the Bermuda Triangle, and things like that. And, you know, we, we do a lot of research, and we don't talk to many people about things. And um, if that's something that the audience would like to hear, they need to come forth and let us know that. If they would like to hear more interview stuff yeah. than, than the research that I do. I, I like the research side of it, and that's why I started this podcast. Yeah. Cuz I like doing the research. I like writing the things out and 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 the scripts and stuff that we do. And I'm just along for the ride. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've been along for the ride together for 36 years. So I I think it's been a pretty good ride so far. And uh mm. you know, I I've really enjoyed it. And um we're going to go ahead and cut this one short because we do have new episodes coming uh next week and things like that. And I just want to thank everybody for listening, supporting us. And with that being said, until next time, when we discuss another tale yet to be told. Thank you for listening, and remember to like and share the show. We would also appreciate a five-star rating wherever possible to help new listeners find the show. We welcome all questions or comments you may have about this or any other episode, and our contact information can be found in the show notes of this episode. You can also follow us at foreverparanormal.com. And if you'd like to support us, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash foreverparanormal. The links to these are also in the show notes of this episode.